Hey everybody, welcome back again to Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy where the proof is in the singing. I have something really, really special for you guys today. Let me tell you what it is. I've been doing this series on isolated vocal tracks and next up is Freddie Mercury, the band is Queen, and it's Bohemian Rhapsody. And before you say, oh, not another Bohemian Rhapsody, haven't we beat that thing to death? Yes, we have, but not like I'm what I'm about to show you. Check this out. I'm gonna do a vocal analysis. I'm gonna do a tutorial. I'm gonna teach you some, some things of how Freddie sang it. Talk a little bit, a lot of it about his voice. But I'm also gonna talk about the recording process. I'm gonna talk about the orchestral of vocals, the choral vocals that were done, how they were done. And I've even done some recording myself. And I'm gonna take the pieces, the instrumental track, the isolated vocal track, and the background vocal tracks that I've created personally, and I'm gonna show you how these were all put together so we can put some flesh and blood on this and actually take a look at one of the most iconic songs, maybe the greatest rock song of all time, and how it was done. So before we get started, if you wouldn't mind, please like and subscribe to my channel. That'd be really cool. Uh, I have a singing course. The course is called How to Sing Better Than Anyone Else. You can find it right here at KenTamplinVocalAcademy.com. I also have a free singing forum over there. For you guys interested in singing, if you want to learn how to sing, if you're already an advanced singer and everything in between, you can bip on over there. There's 20,000 people over there negotiate, negotiating all these different styles and techniques on how to get to become a great singer, uh, not the least of which we're going to talk about, which is Freddie Mercury. Now, a little backstory on me quickly and this song. So, um, I was known as the go-to guy in Hollywood, California, uh, you can go to imdb.com and put in my name and you can see not all, but quite a few of the TV shows I've worked on, everything from Baywatch, X-Files, Ace Ventura, you name it, I've worked on a lot of shows, but I was the go-to guy to do something what are called takedowns. What is a takedown? Takedown is when they want a piece of music that's in the likeness of, which by the way is a legal term, so they don't get sued for something that says, I wanna sound exactly like this, can you make a copy uh, of this song because the publishing and the license for the mechanic or the, uh, the instrumental track is too expensive, let's say it's a million bucks, like for this song it's probably more than a million dollars, right? Can you make a replica of this exactly like it? And I was known for doing that. So um, I've got, in fact, a lot of people say, how do your music beds sound so good? Well, a lot of them, are because that's my background. So you can you can do this. So when we do this, no one has the access to this. And I'm not sure of any very many people that can give you the information I'm about to give you. So I know I should just shut up, but I wanted to give you that little caveat in the background of how I got to be able to do all this stuff. So let's do this again. I'm gonna do a solo vocal version. We're gonna play, it's not solo all the way. There's some harmonies on it. I couldn't quite get the only solo thing. I have the solo instrumental version, and then I'm gonna add my own background vocals, and we're gonna talk about how this was all this was done. So I'm gonna get started right away. We're just gonna play it. We'll talk about it as we go. Here we go. Is this the real life? Is this just fantasy? Caught in a landslide. No escape from reality. Okay, now, first thing is, is Freddie has, I'm gonna, by the way, when I say something negative about Freddie, hang in there. It's not that I'm, I'm picking him apart. Please don't take it that way. I just wanna put some flesh and blood on this. I wanna humanize him so that we're, you know, we, it's attainable, so we can see ourselves doing this, okay? So, he goes, he starts out and he was known to have some nasal issues and I, my understanding is he did a fair amount of blow in his day uh, and it may have collapsed some of the nasal cavities. So, there's a lot of people out there that say, Ken, I have some really serious nasal problems. I can't really sing because of it because I can't get past my nasality or the fact that I can't breathe through my nose. So I want to play this again and I want to show you really carefully, listen closely to how stuffed up he sounds in the nose. Check it out. Is this the real life? Is this just fantasy? Caught in a landslide? No escape from reality. Okay, now, if I were to go, is this the real life? Is this just fantasy? Caught in a landslide, oh, escape from reality. Right? That's kind of how he sounds. It's almost completely clogged. But he was able to, to you know, man up and, and maneuver his way through that. And by doing so, it kind of gave him his own style. And he wasn't always that stuffed up, but here we are, one of the most epic songs he's ever done, and he's really stuffed up in the sound. Now, 
at the end, Escape from Reality, you can hear that the pitch isn't that exact. Now, I suspect, now the producer, his name is Roy Thomas Baker, and he was just an amazing guy. And my understanding is, is that when Freddie did this song, that it was three songs that he'd worked on kind of his whole life up to that point. When he was really young, like early teens or mid-teens, and then he had another completely different song that he was writing and da da da. And he couldn't quite put all the, the pieces together to ever finish those songs. So he got together with Roy Thomas Baker and the band, and they put those three songs he could never complete into one song. Now, let that be a lesson to all of us to go, ah, there's a song, I love my song, I wrote it, but I can't find the chorus. Or there's a, ah, I got a chorus for this, but I can't find the verse. Or, you know, I just can't put this all together. Well, so Freddie massaged this to the point he was able to connect all of this in one of the most amazing rock opera ballads or ballad slash rock songs of all time. Now, I want you to listen back to the pitch. We're gonna do this one more time. I'm not gonna, you know, beat this up too much, but listen to Escape From Reality, and you can hear it's, it's not that spot on, but I suspect the, the producer, Roy Thomas Baker, was like, there's so much emotion, there's so much passion, and there's so much intimacy in it, I'm just gonna let Freddie do Freddie, and I'm just gonna capture it, okay? Now, in addition to that, I also suspect that a lot of this stuff was played kind of live with the band. Now, I know they recorded in a lot of different rooms and whatnot, but I know that there's a real live feel to all of this where everything doesn't feel like it's just they laid down a track and then they, they layered another track on top of it, they layered another track on top of that. It's got a very ebb and flow live feel to it. But so listen closely to this again. Check it out. Is this the real life? I'll point this out. Is this just fantasy? Caught in a landslide No escape from reality Listen to the word from No escape from reality From reality Right? There's a little bit of pitchiness there. Now you wouldn't notice this if you're, you know, it's such an epic piece. We forgive everybody for stuff. No one's expecting to be perfect. But as we go through this, one of the things I like most about this tune and a lot of the stuff that happened in this era is that, um, they're gonna use something called a Mellotron. And what a Mellotron is, is it's this unit way back in the 70s that reproduced choral effects specifically for vocals, okay? Now, the bands back then didn't rely on that as a means to, as a crutch because they couldn't do something. They're using it to expand their art. Let me give you some examples of this. There's that. Uh, Jimmy Page, uh, the guitar player for Led Zeppelin, uh, used all kinds of things, one of which was he'd plug his guitar into what's called a Leslie. Now, a Leslie is that big box with the whirling horns that go around that a Hammond B3 organist play through. For you younger audiences, I'm telling this, you older guys, it's like, no, no S can, I get it. But I'm trying to explain this for people that don't know. So he'd play into this thing and it'd give him like this real cool tremolo effect. And so he would do that, or he would take a bow, right? And song remains the same and he'd play guitar with a, a violin bow, etc. So things were done in the name of expanding artistry. Another example of this was way back before Peter Frampton was popular, uh, Jeff Beck used a, a hose that he put into a driver and he actually sang into this and it became the talk box. You know, is it all right? Is it all right? Peter Frampton popularized it and then again in the 80s, Bon Jovi, Richie Sambora, pop, pop, more, pop, more. In addition to that, he popularized it even more, okay? So with all that said, so these devices, whether it's a wah-wah pedal for Jimi Hendrix, whatever that is, were used to enhance creativity. Today, um, you know, with the advent of the very first song Cher did, if you believe, auto-tune has come in and instead of using it as a way to enhance or come up with uh, unique ways to expand our artistry, we've used it as a crutch. Now, Ken, that's a long information for you. I'm saying it because we're about to hear a Mellotron and it was used in some really cool ways. Now, Mellotrons were also used on keyboards and stuff and you actually heard as late as, I think it was the late 60s, early 70s, uh, the Beatles used it for some of the keyboard stuff they did, um, which was also gave a really interesting effect. But again, it was used as an effect, not as a crutch, okay? So as we continue, let's keep them with a view towards that because I'm gonna explain some of this stuff as we go. Open your eyes, look up to the skies and see. I'm just a poor boy. I know. <clears throat> I have to point a few things out if it were me, okay? I'm just a poor boy. 
and he's got this really fast Caprino or Goat's Wiggle vibrato. Now I've said this before and I'm not you know, calling out Freddie. It was the emotion of that where his vibrato just kind of came out when it did, he even said that. And he pretty much said he had no real control over it. Well, we know from a technical standpoint, we absolutely can control our vibrato, okay? But he chose not to do that because he chose not to be that technical. Now he was technical in some ways. He had a great range, he had great power, he had great control and stamina and all those things. But Freddie was more of a theater guy, okay? And back in this time, um, there really weren't a lot of bands doing what Queen did. Queen was the ultimate theatrical band. Now, yes, there was, you know, Ziggy Stardust and David Bowie's, he came out, he's, he had a lot of, you know, a lot of theatrical things to his stuff. Of course, we had Rocky Horror Picture Show, right? Uh, we had the movie Tommy, you know? So there, I'm not saying there weren't rock operas, absolutely there was that, but Queen was marrying a very theatrical approach to a rock approach. And we're gonna see all that dynamic in this song, in one song. So not only was Freddie a great singer, a great composer, a great songwriter, but he incorporated a lot of different stylistic things in Queen. And we see that with all, you know, crazy little thing called love being almost a crooner kind of piece all the way down to, you know, um, tie your mother down and heavier rock songs. So we see so much dynamic and so much diversity in what Queen did. So let's continue to, but listen closely to the vibrato and cause we're going to talk about it. So let's do it again. I'm just a poor boy. Poor boy, boy. Right? It's not very controlled. I need no sympathy. Now, sympathy, right? He didn't use auto tune, so simp is a little flat. You'd never know that in the track, and we're gonna do this in a minute. We're gonna see how the track can cover a multitude of sin, but it also, again, it's it's these carbuncles that makes it real, it makes it believable, which it is, it makes it approachable, it puts some flesh and blood on Freddy and the humanity. You know, yes, uh, you know, he was a legend that's pretty much untouchable for his creativity and ingenuity, but there is also a part that he was human. And we can take that and we can see ourselves going, well, gosh, I could see myself doing that. I, I can sing some Freddy, you know? Mark Martell did a fabulous job of this. You guys know who that is. I mean, he should be the one talking about Freddy, not me, but I'm doing a composition of everything from the takedown of the bands and the singing and so forth. But I want you to know, and, and he had a good command of his, of his diaphragm too, so you can hear the strength in the sound. It's not all in his throat. Let's listen one more time. I need no sympathy. Sympathy. Easy come, easy go. Little high, little low. Any way the wind blows doesn't really matter to me. To me. Very dramatic. To me. You got to plug up your nose. To me. Right? You can really hear some nasality or stuffiness in his nose. So check it out. Mama, just now you hear the mama. He trails off the end a little flat, right? But again, it's also emotional. So it's kind of like it's like I'm just gonna wear my heart out on my sleeve, and I'm just gonna let the, my heart tell the story. I'm not so worried about it. I just got to get the emotion and the story across. And we certainly hear that. Check it out, mama. Just killed a man Put a gun against his head Pulled my trigger, now he's dead Now, we talk a lot about mixed voice and Freddie's showing off a lot of that Mama Just killed a man Put a gun against his head Pulled my trigger, now he's dead You can hear on the ends of some of these phrases he's mixing it's not just chest, it's not just head. He's mixing it between the two to give you some flavor, some velvety tone in his voice and be real emotional on the sound. So that's pretty stinking cool. Put a gun against his head, pulled my trigger, now he's dead. Hear that? Mama, life had just begun. But now I've gone and thrown it all away. Now, on Just Begun, you can kind of hear his voice crack just a little bit. So I'm thinking to myself, Roy, why did you leave all this stuff in? I suspect that when you're in the moment 
and you're singing something. And, and we see this especially in earlier music, you know, 60s music, 70s music, and well, actually, you know, even, even Motown stuff and before, you know, early jazz stuff, right? Pre-doo-wop, you know, early, early jazz stuff, whether it's Billie Holiday or, you know, whatever, Ella Fitzgerald, we hear uh, little carbuncles here and there. But when you're in the moment and you're singing something, there's so much continuity or contiguous energy that it's really hard to stop, stop the tape and go back and match the energy, the exact energy and the emotion that you have going into it. So you just roll the tape and you go, okay, man, you know, it is what it is and it's spectacular, right? And that's kind of what's gone on here. I believe how this, all this stuff was kind of, they let it slide because let's think about it, guys, let's face it, come on. This song took how long to do and is recorded over how, you know, how many different studios and, and, and. And by the way, my understanding is this uh, piano is the same piano I want to say that Paul McCartney used in Let It Be, if I'm not mistaken. So there's all kinds of backstory, really interesting stuff. You guys check out my, um, I did a few, you know, what makes the singer great, how to sing like Freddie, you know, and, and, and I've done some, some different uh, Queen stuff. I'll try to take all the Queen stuff, including me doing how to sing like Freddie Mercury, where I, I go through a, a medley of him and other students doing that. I'll try to put all the Queen stuff in the description. You can kind of pick it apart yourself. But anyway, so um, yeah, so just really interesting how Roy Thomas Baker let all this nuance, you know, kind of carbuncle stuff or, or mistakes, so to speak, kind of go by and you don't really hear it in the track because he was more concerned, I think, about the, the motion, the passion, the story, everything that was gone, the production and everything that went with it. Okay? Begun, but now I've gone and thrown it all away. Now, on, now I've gone and thrown it, thrown it all away. I'm thrown it all away. You can hear him passing from his falsetto into the passaggio and then down into his chest voice with a throwing it all away. He's got the kind of little Freddy grit that we know and love him for. Um, but I want to talk about head voice stuff real quick. I have a singing course, as you know, and I cover all this in my singing course. Freddy, at some point in his life, matched the brightness and the tonal qualities of his head voice to match his chest voice to some extent. It was definitely different, like when he's, he's belting in his head voice, or in his chest voice, excuse me, in his call register, it's definitely very different than his head voice. So he didn't grow it that much, but he grew it enough to where he can go in and out of the passaggio, the passageway between chest and head, and mix through these areas, and it's seamless, and it sounds really cool, and he really uses it for emotion, because one minute he'll be really light, and the next minute he'll be really intense, and then he'll be light and intense, and he'll go back and forth between these energies, okay? Mama. Right there. Now you can hear a punch there, didn't mean, so it wasn't contiguous, so they had to kind of come back and go, okay, stop there, let's go back, cut the tape, and, and punch it like it. E mama. By the way, on the word mama, you hear the end of mama, you hear the little break in his, his voice, he, he cracked a little bit, right? But they left it in, listen. Hear that? Let's do it back. E mama. You hear the punch on didn't mean to make you cry? Mean to make you cry If I'm not back again this time tomorrow Carry on, carry on Is if nothing real Hear the other punch? Is it nothing really matters? There's another punch there, you can clearly hear it Carry on, carry on By the way, so let's do this together before we hear that punch Let's do this together Carry on Carry on, nothing really matters, right? I want you to play with it. Ah, and I want you to keep the throat open and play with that a little bit and force the throat or train the throat to stay open so you can get in and out of chest to passage you. Carry on. So do this note with me. Uh, and see if you can do it without hearing the break. Uh, uh, 
See if you can do without hearing the chirp, what I call the speed bump. And I teach you guys in my singing course exactly how to do this so you can seamlessly get in and out of chess. Do it with me again. You guys, you music or singing lovers out there, lovers of Freddie's voice who want to learn how to do this. Uh, I want you to practice just that little passageway over and over and over again, and then you can see how you carry on, carry on, doesn't really matter. You can see how you can get into these spaces that Freddie got into by just practicing this stuff carefully and using him as the template in your example. Okay, let's continue. This time tomorrow, carry on, carry on, as if nothing really matters. Hear the punch? Too late. Now, I have to say one more thing. Okay, so here we are to me up till now, maybe not quite to the end of where we left off, but that was basically all an intro straight up. Now let's remember, this is three different songs that were put together, piecemeal together to make one epic piece, right? So we have this gargantuan intro. And what this reminds me a lot of is it reminds me a lot of kind of an Elton John piece, right? Um, because Bernie Toppin, my understanding that one of the songwriters who wrote the lyrics for a lot of early Elton John stuff, good by Yellow Brick Road, you know, don't let the sun go down on me, some of the most epic songs that he's done, um, uh, sorry seems to be the hardest word, is that Bernie would sit in one room and write all these lyrics. And then Elton would take them in another room, and I don't even think they ever actually collaborated together, weird, huh? But he would take those and he'd put music to it. So in Elton John songs, what we have are we have not really a lot of choruses. Now I'm not saying, don't let the sun go down on me, is in a chorus, yes. But there are all these amazing left turns and right turns and up and down. And the music take you is very musical, very composer driven, like a music uh, movie score, right? So it's very composer driven. And so very much so that's what this is like where all of a sudden you're not really into any chorus. Isn't that weird? It's kind of like Stairway to Heaven, right? There's no like real chorus. It just takes you all these crazy musical places and it's so incredibly musical that you're just sucked in and just seduced by this whole thing that it keeps your attention, right? Well, I mean, we see this uh, in a lot of early 70s music and this is maybe one of the greatest examples of just a great musical piece and then it ends up, you know, as a rock opera, we kind of get to the end and it just takes us to all these crazy places. Now, in addition to all of that, the lyrics are really cool and it even breaks out into, you know, some Italian stuff, Galileo, Galileo, Magnifico, you know, uh, Beelzebub as the devil will decide for me. So he's drawing off a lot of Italian poetry and a, a, a t Italian art, and he's incorporating that in his music as well, right? Because we know oh, there's a lot of songs that Freddie does that where he'll take a history lesson and he'll talk about, you know, Marie Antoinette or, you know, whatever. He'll draw, he'll, he'll, he'll give us a little history lesson in some of his music, and he does it here too, which is actually really stinking cool if you ask me. So here we go. So kind of like, uh, this is a reprise, or a repeat of the whole beginning. Here we go. Too late, my time has come. Now, do you hear that? He's mixing. Too late, my time has come. You're add the air. Well, the air is actually kind of going into a mixed voice. It's not just air. You can hear him tapering off of his actual chest resonance sound in the mixed voice. Listen closely. Too late. My time has come. You hear that? Sends shivers down my spine. Body's aching all the time. Now on, sends shivers down my spine. You can hear his overbite. We all know he had an overbite. And he compensated really well for that. But you can hear that overbite. So, you know, this guy had a lot of um, you know, handicaps, let's call them, to work through. Some nasal issues, the overbite, you know, and all these different things. And yet we don't notice any of that because he was just, oh, by the way, did I forget to tell you, like, how how amazing of a live performer he was. So he not only had all this working for him, he wasn't sitting cowering over in a piano in a corner. He had the audience eating out of the palm of his hand. So he's also an extraordinary entertainer in addition to all these other gifts that he had. And he had to earn that, man. He earned that along the way. This wasn't just given to him. You could tell all this stuff didn't fall in his lap, man. The dude 
knew his craft and he knew it well and he honed it in and worked hard on it. Um, goodbye, everybody. I've got to go. Gotta leave you all behind and face the truth. Did you hear the punch on gotta leave you all behind? Listen close. Goodbye, everybody. I've got to go. Gotta leave you all behind and face the truth. Hear the wiggly vibrato. Truth, right? instability in the vibrato. Now, a lot of that too is because of command of a consistency of strength in the abdomen. Face the truth. He could have done that, but he didn't. He goes, truth, right? He had a kind of a wiggly Caprino vibrato. Now, the other thing that I find really interesting is I didn't mention this before because I didn't want to get too caught up on it early on. But go back and listen to this and you're going to notice what are called plosives. And we've talked about this before. And what that is is usually on P's and B's and T's, you hear <laughs> right? You hear these explosions of air hitting the diaphragm. Well, what that is, is that's being the windscreen, you know, the big windscreens people use, is it's not stopping the air from hitting the diaphragm so hard, and then all of a sudden you get this explosion. And you can hear these anomalies throughout all the recording, and you're thinking to yourself, gosh, Roy Thomas Baker again, why did you let all those things go by? Probably because he didn't want to mess with the continuity of the emotion, the passion, the energy, the fluidity, everything that was working, he just let it go. And I'm glad he did because we have this unbelievably epic per performance as a result of it, all right? Goodbye, everybody. I've got to go. Gotta leave you all behind and face the truth. Now, on that face the truth, right? That's a very buzzsawy kind of distortion. That's not necessarily a healthy distortion, guys. But Freddie used it. It was his signature sound, and he didn't overdo it to the point where, well, he did get nodes, but um, it did. He didn't overdo it to the point where it super cost him his voice, and he lost all of his range. Because songs like Show Must Go On, I think, is one of his best performances, believe it or not. It may not have been as um, world-renowned and as long-lasting per se or as, as huge as an epic piece like this, but it was still a phenomenal performance. Ooh, mama! Ooh. Hear the crack and it's on Mama! Hear, listen to the crack on Mama. Mama! Now again, I'm not looking to air Freddie's dirty laundry in front of everybody. I hopefully have praised him enough to show you how much I love Freddie and have absolute utmost respect and admiration for almost everything he's done. But I want to show you guys and put, again, some flesh and blood on this and humanize this and make it attainable to show you this is doable. This is doable. Now, there's only going to be one Freddy. I get that. And absolutely, I agree with that. But I also want to show you to put some humanity on it so we could see, wow, so he was like, you know, a, 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 a god, small g, you know, in the music world. But he also had to earn it, and he wasn't perfect. But it's kind of like someone that is just trying really hard. You're going, you know, he may not be perfect. Like, there's great soccer players out there that they may miss a ball here and there. But Lionel Messi, man, when you look at his whole game and his whole life and his whole career, whatever your favorite soccer player is or whatever your favorite idol is, you look at him and go, you know, how interesting. It was all the times that he made the mistakes and overcame the mistakes that's what made him great at what he became and did ultimately. Let me say that again. It's overcoming and getting past and getting through all those mistakes. You gotta wonder, ask yourself the question, how many times did he fail at this going, growing up in life and practicing and practicing and practicing? We're pointing out the minutia of the small little you know, details of, of him, him not maybe not uh, missing a mark a little bit here and there, but it's so overshadowed by his greatness, we don't even think about it. But I think it's interesting that he had to go through the growth process, the pains of growing through that in order to get to what he became, okay? Ooh, I don't wanna die. You're on die? Right? Listen. I don't wanna die. 
I sometimes wish I'd never been born at all. Let me get past this because there's a big solo here. Here we go. I see a silhouette coming up. I see a little silhouette of a man. Scaramouche, Scaramouche, will you do the fandango? Thunderbolt and lightning, very, very frightening me. No. Ooh. Um, we go from this, the ballad of, you know, Freddy, okay? The beginning of this whole thing. The ode to Freddy, so to speak. And then we get to this other piece and all of a sudden it shifts gear and it goes into this like, operatic choral thing where you can literally, and we're gonna go through this in a minute when I'm gonna do a takedown and we're gonna do the isolated vocal, then I'm gonna do my background vocals and then we're gonna add the instrumental track and put all these pieces together. You're gonna go, oh my gosh, then all of a sudden he's entering like the world of opera and he's piecing together an opera for you in the middle of all this stuff and then he's gonna, he's gonna rock it at the end, right? So he's, uh, he's showing you his influences, how deep they run and him reproducing these influences in the coolest kinds of ways. So you're, now we're getting to peer into Freddie's operatic influences. Check it out, in theater and operatic influences. I see a little silhouette of a man. Scaramouche, Scaramouche, will you do the fandango? Thunderbolt and lightning, very, very frightening me. Galileo, Galileo, Galileo Figaro. Okay, now we talked about the Mellotron, okay? You're hearing that here, and I don't want to overstate it now because I'm going to talk about it more in a minute, but I wanted to point out that there's, a, there's another aspect where he's taking technology, and it's, he could have reproduced this without using technology. It would have been easy for him, for the band to sing all this stuff. But he chose not to because he was trying to make it a little more modern. So he's he's not only taking old school stuff and putting it all together, but he's contemporizing it for the time that he was in, which is also really cool. Galileo, 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 Galileo Figaro. Magnifico. I'm just a poor boy and nobody loves me. He's just a poor boy from a poor family. Monstrosity. By the way, I like the British accents to it. I tried to do that a little bit on my background vocals to authenticate it a little bit more because the guys are all British. So you get this kind of British, white British opera kind of thing going on here too, which I think is pretty cool. Life from this monstrosity. Monstrosity. Easy come, easy go. Will you let me go? Bismillah. No, we will not let you go. Let him go. Bismillah. We will not let you go. Let him go. Bismillah. We will not let you go. Let me go. Now, uh, we were talking about drawing from some Italian classical stuff. So, you've got uh, Scaramouche, right? Fandango, Thunderbolt, Galileo, right? He's using all these Italian references, you know, Beelzebub, right? So you're going through and he's kind of, you know, letting letting us see all this really, really cool stuff that um, we probably wouldn't have normally picked out had we not really known the lyrics so well, or he kind of stuffs it in our face to say, here, I'm giving you a little history lesson here and I'm adding some kind of fun stuff to this. Let me go, we'll not let you go, let me go, we'll not let you go. Mamma mia, mamma mia. Mamma mia, let me go. Be as a devil put aside for me, for me, for me. Now, so here we have this epic, epic buildup. Oh my gosh, you know, right? I remember seeing this on Don Kirshner's rock concert where they showed all this stuff, and as a kid, I'm just going, wow, this is just. Like, how do you get that good? Like, how do you take all these influences and put them all together and make them work rather than just sounding like a train wreck, right? But anyway, so we this whole beginning, I'm, my understanding is that's the first two songs that he wrote that he meshed together with Roy Thomas Baker and the band, and then it moves into the rock part that consummates it and brings it all together. And then he caps it all off at the very end, going all the way back to the first song, reprising it at the end to make it all continuitous and all, you know, a, a, puts a cap and some closure on it. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> Brian May is one of my all-time favorite guitar players. He's not, you know, Steve Lukather with chops in that sense or, you know, Steve Vai or Paul Gilbert or, you know, whatever, Joe Satriani. He's not that kind of guitar player. But his phrasing, 
the way his notes, his melodic structures, uh, and the way he did all of his choral guitars and his tone and everything was just so perfect for Queen to fit in this theater, choral, operatic, rock opera kind of thing. It could have been more perfect, right? <laughs> So you think you okay. can stop <laughs> I gotta do the Garth thing, <laughs> right? I gotta do that part. You guys remember the scene where they go to Las Vegas? So you think you can now, in this part here, if you listen, they have a doubler on his voice, or he's double tracked his voice. So it's gone from this real intimate thing, and it's moving more into more of an arena kind of thing. Check it out, listen closely. Do the double track. So you think you can So you think you can stone me and spit in my eyes. Right, you can hear the double effect. Mine was a, a, a unison or you know a solo, and you can hear the doubler. Put me a spin in my eyes. So you think you can love me and leave me to die. Oh baby, can do this to me, baby. Just gotta get out. Just gotta get right out of here. Now, on, on, the, on the other version, I think there's more vocals on this, so I, I don't know, like, I don't know how much background they actually added to this and how much doubler they add. You know, we get these tracks and who knows what was actually really on the recording. I do know that there's virtually no reverbs on any of this, and I know for a fact they did use reverbs on the track. So, you know, we're, we're hearing at least a lot of this without some of the reverbs, and I'm gonna explain some of that too as, as I talk about the panning of all the background vocals, how that creates imaging, so like you can actually see the voices and some of her in the center, some of her pan, but I'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> Notice, again, the nasality, and he reprises the beginning to remind you of how the song started. Isn't that cool? Like, we went to all these musical places, and then we kind of, we reminisce back to the beginning of the song. Check it out. Nothing really matters, anyone can see. Nothing really matters. Love that. Nothing really matters. Beautiful note choices. Nothing really matters to me. And even at the end, even down to the end, I personally would, me, I would have personally perfected the end, but even down to the end, he didn't. Why? Probably because he didn't care. He just said, no, man, that's, that's me. That's me. I'm Freddy. That's what I do. That's what I got. And so he didn't go back to a technical thing and make everything perfect because it was perfect in its presentation, in everything that he did. And he, did, he wasn't interested, again, in so much of the technicality of making all that absolutely perfect, right? Anyway, the wind blows. Okay, so um, anyway, I'm gonna now show you guys, uh, again, the solo vocal version so we get a flavor of it, uh, you know, solo and naked alone. Uh, my background vocals, and I'm gonna combine that with the instrumental track all together. So let's do this, check this out. Okay, now what I wanna do is I wanna take and show you the lead vocal by itself, how dry, and the solo vocal, what it's on. It's not actually solo, because there is a little harmony on it, but it's pretty naked and it's pretty isolated. So I'm gonna take the lead vocal, I'm gonna play that first so you get a flavor of, gosh, you know, if I were to hear this, hear this vocal all by itself, would I really think it was that fantastic? Now you might, you know, but for the most part, you're gonna see how all these embellishments and all these additions with orchestration, choral vocals, you know, the dynamic of the piano and everything that comes together to put this all together to make it truly spectacular, okay? So I wanna start first with just the solo vocal so we get a flavor of it. Then I'm gonna show you some background vocals that I created, okay? They're gonna be, I'm gonna just show you them solo by themselves. So I'll play you that. So I'll play you the whole piece, the intro piece of just the solo vocal with the little harmony that's on there. Then I'll show you just my background vocals. Then I'm gonna add the instrumentation and put all three of them together so we can put some flesh and blood on this thing so we can really see how all these parts together just become wow, all right? So let's start with the lead vocal alone. Here we go. Is this the real life? Is 
this just fantasy? Caught in a landslide No escape from reality Open your eyes Look up to the skies and see Okay, cool. Now, that's the lead vocal. Here are the background vocals that I created, right? Check this out. These are just the isolated background vocals. Check it out. Is this the real life? Is this just fantasy? Caught in a landslide. No escape from reality. Open your eyes. Look up to the skies and see. Okay, cool. Now, I'm going to take now and put the instrumentation that's isolated instrumentation with my background vocals, with the lead vocal all together so you can hear all this works in concert with each other. Check this out. Here it is. Is this the real life? Is this just fantasy? Caught in a landslide, no escape from reality. Open your eyes, look up to the skies and see. I'm just now, let me just go ahead and do just again. I'm just going to do just the lead vocal. All right, here is just the lead vocal alone. I'm just a poor boy. Now they have some harmony on the lead vocal. I didn't do that. That's on the track. I couldn't get an isolated track with only Freddie's voice. So, but I also did do some harmonies myself. In fact, I'll play those for you right now so you can hear them. So. Okay, so I did those by myself and I'm gonna add those to the track because that is in the original track. There's a lot of extra choral stuff. So let's listen to it again with just the solo vocal. I'm just a poor boy. I need no sympathy. Because I'm easy come, easy go. Little high, little low. Now, let me play it with just my background vocals with his vocals. So you can check this out. I'm just a poor boy. I need no sympathy. Because I'm easy come, easy go. Little high, little low. Now, let me play it with the track so that everything is working together in concert. Check it this out. I'm just a poor boy. Now let's play just the solo vocal alone. Here it is, check it out. Any way the wind blows doesn't really matter to me. Now there's quite a few vocals on the, that solo vocal track. So if you heard the track by itself, I don't think you'd be as wowed. I'm wowed just because it's Freddie and it's cool. The arrangements are amazing, right? But here's with my, here's with my choral of vocals behind it. Check it out, here we go. Here's, here's the, the chorals that I've added. Any way the wind blows doesn't really matter to me. To me. Okay, now here's with the instrumentation, the whole thing all together. Any way the wind blows doesn't really matter to me. We're gonna just go back to the solo vocal again. Mama just killed a man. Now I'm gonna get to a more of the choral stuff here. So I'm gonna fast forward all the way up to where there's the more. Oops, sorry, where there's more orchestration. So hold on, right here. So check this out. It's the truth. Right here, Mama. Now here's with the background vocals. Ooh, mama. Ooh, I don't wanna die. I sometimes wish I'd never been born at all. 
Okay, now let's add the, the instrumental track to it so you see it's like, wow, it's just like, it like wakes it up. You know, it's like, whoa, it wakes it up and it wakes it up more, it wakes it up more. It becomes more and more exciting as you hear all these parts working together. Here's with the track. Now I'm gonna move up up a bit here. Hold on, I'm gonna get to this section here. Check it out, solo vocal first. And I hope you guys are liking this as much as I am because I'm having a good time showing you how this is all broken down and how all these parts fit together. Again, back in my film and TV era where I have to take do takedowns and break down how they did all this stuff, to me it's pretty fascinating. The silhouette of a man. Scaramouche, Scaramouche, will you do the fandango? Thunderbolt and lightning, very, very frightening me. Galileo, Galileo, Galileo Figaro. Magnifico. Now, it's not really fair because they do have a ton of background vocals on this, but let me show you just my background vocal track so you can hear this. Check this out. All right, here we go. Scaramouche, Scaramouche, will you do the fandango? Thunderbolts and lightning, very, very frightening me. Okay, now of course I go through the whole thing, right? And notice the panning of it too. I got the panning exactly like the original too because it makes a big difference because you don't know that you're hearing things coming like watching a choir. Like I said, you're watching all this different uh, imagery of a choir. Now let me add the lead vocal and the backgrounds together only without the instrumentation. Check it out. Scaramouche, Scaramouche, will you do the fandango? Thunderbolts and lightning, very, very frightening me. Galileo. Galileo, Galileo Figaro. Magnifico. I'm just a poor boy, nobody. Now let's add it with the instrumentation. Check it out. Here we go. Man, Scaramouche, Scaramouche, will you do the fandango? Thunderbolts and lightning, very, very frightening me. Galileo, Galileo, Galileo Figaro. Magnifico. I'm just a poor boy, nobody loves me. He's just a poor boy from a poor. Easy come, easy go, will you let me go? Bismillah. Now let's do this together. Let's just check out just the lead vocal. I know there's some backgrounds on it, but Easy come, easy go, will you let me go? Bismillah. No, we will not let you go. Let him go! Bismillah. Now someone will... added a, a good chunk of those backgrounds. Let me add my backgrounds to those so you can hear it together. Check it out. Easy come, easy go, will you let me go? Bismillah. No, we will not let you go. Let him go! Bismillah, we will not let you go. Let him go. Bismillah, we will not let you go. Let me go. We will not let you go. Let me go. We will not let you go. Mamma mia, mamma mia, mamma mia, let me go. Now let's play with the instrumentation and check this out. See how all this works together. Pretty cool how these parts fit together. Bismillah, no, we will not let you go. Let him go. Bismillah, we will not let you go. Let him go. Bismillah, we will not let you go. Let me go. We will not let you go. Let me go. We will not let you go. Mamma mia, mamma mia, mamma mia, let me go. Be as a devil put aside for me, for me, for me. Cool. Um, this was awesome getting a chance to show you guys how to do this. Hopefully, you're enjoying it as much as I am, and please check out my next video.